live. We're live. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Colossal Plays here at Colossal HQ. I'm Chris Ham, the lead developer for Colossal Games. As always, joined by my frenemous, uh Chris Beyer, the graphic designer. And uh, we have a special guest today, our friend Daniel Vallejos, who uh, is a local gamer, does some playtesting and stuff with us. And uh, we're going to be playing Almanac, the Dragon Roads, from, or Dragon Road from Scott Holmes which will be launching on Kickstarter this Thursday. Uh, we'll be doing a full three-player uh, playthrough, so certainly feel free to ask us any questions, which we will answer uh, as soon as we can and to the best of our ability. And uh, pay attention to the links at the, uh, in the in description, the description yeah. that will guide you to a contest to win, uh, what is it, the Outpost? or? The outpost outpost pledge level. Yes, <clears throat> is the the basic pledge level, which gets you the game and all the, the stretch all the stretch goal content and stuff. Yeah, and uh, merchants manifest the uh, expansion. Yeah. Um, other than that, we're ready to go while we set up, and I'll describe that a little bit and give a little overview about Almanac. Uh, feel free to ask any questions before we get rolling. Uh, what Almanac is is a worker placement game where players take on the role of merchants seeking to become the most famed merchant and we're traveling through a whimsical fantasy realm visiting six total locations each of these locations contained in this awesome uh book almanac illustrated by jackie yes. davis jackie davis that's correct uh each location has its own unique rules regarding worker placement. Now, of course, the standard ones are in effect, but usually there's some spatial element and special bits, and it really adds to the feeling that you're traveling and visiting a new place each time. Um, <clears throat> additionally, there is a deck of 20 encounters, all at different levels. Some of these are combat, some of these are people you meet along the way. Uh, as I said, the, the, the vibe is whimsical, so this isn't high or dark fantasy, but more, you know, uh, I, I don't want to say Disney, but you light know, fantasy. light fantasy, yes, fantasy uh, light and lighthearted in nature as well. Uh, across the various locations as the players travel the Dragon Road, they will be accumulating gold for buying and selling goods and completing contracts, uh, expanding their caravan as they add caravans to it and gaining more workers, and eventually we'll reach our destination in one of the two places in the Dragon City where the game ends. At the end, uh, players will total up all of the different ways that they can gain fame, uh, money, contracts, wagon or caravans etc and then the player with the most fame wins and that's a, a basic overview of what we'll be doing uh, i will say that at the end of each location the first five as we're traveling we will bid for the guide who will then determine which of two locations we travel to next uh, this is not a completely uninformed decision because at the bottom of each page there is a uh, availability and demand chart showing you which one which goods there are four good types are most prevalent and which are most scarce moving in the other direction and thus which ones sell for the highest price to the lowest price in that location obviously depending on what you have in your various crates in your caravan will dictate the place that you would most like to go or perhaps prevent your opponents from going if uh, they are stock full of a good type that will be the most valuable. Um, that is really uh, most of what there is to the game as each location has its own rules so there's a brief you know read the lore, understand the special rules for the page and go on but uh, we're ready to get started. Buyer will be changing the camera angle. Who's the guy right now? Uh, we can go ahead and roll for that right now for setup. High roll goes first. I roll four. All right. I roll a six. six. Buyer, you want me to roll for you? Yeah, I rolled a five. He rolled a four. Okay. All right. So uh, Daniel will start as the guide. There we go. Uh, he starts with ten gold, and then this, in clockwise order, will increase by two gold for each following player. So I will start with. 12 and buyer will start with 14. So there's my 12. 
12. Yeah. Money is kept hidden because it is used for uh, a form of blind bid that we will explain when we come to the first one. Uh, each player now receives two contract cards. Now these are contracts that you will be attempting to fulfill by having the appropriate goods in your wagon or your caravan, taking the stamp a contract action, and then you reveal the contract, discard the goods shown, and you will gain uh, a certain amount of points available at the end of the game, as well as each one contain or having a, an ongoing ability that you have access to for the remainder of the game. And they vary wild, widely from uh, contract to contract. Uh, any contracts that you do not finish by the end of the game count against you in fame, so uh, make sure you fulfill those uh, contractual obligations. So buyer gets two, Daniel two, and I have two, and of course you can look at them. Uh, whenever a new location is entered, you reveal caravan cards equal to the number of players. Caravan cards have uh, a cost in both monies and uh, goods, and you have to take the appropriate action to add it to your caravan. Some of them provide, all of them provide fame, which is the victory points. Some of them provide additional strength should you have to fight an encounter or there's some other test of strength involved and others still uh, provide a worker, uh, a meeple, which you then add to your caravan immediately and get to place it, assuming there's a legal spot for you to place. Uh, lastly, of course, and in some cases most importantly, they provide additional crates so that you can store more goods that you can sell. Uh, Bayer, did you, have you got your money? Yeah. Okay, so we have the money, we have the contract. 14, right? Correct, you have 14. So, <clears throat> We are now ready to begin. Uh, we are at the outpost. Uh, the outpost is the trailhead of the perilous dragon road. Though a shadow of its former glory, the legendary guild artisans now call this place home. It is a common rite of passage for all new traders to visit the artisans and in their uh, visit the artisans in their huts and have a good night's rest before the long journey ahead. So, of course, that's the lore, the placement rules. Players can only place one of their workers in each guild hut. So there are four guild huts on this page over here. And obviously, as it says, each player is only able to place one of their workers per hut. We're now ready for the action phase. Daniel, you're up first. Uh, so that's the shop action. And you have all the information on the inside of your uh, uh, player screen there. Okay, uh, let's see. I think we're going to start by placing my guys here to get two of the yellows and then I think that's the green. Okay, two skyfish, skyfish. and one dew leaf. So or two, two yellows and a green. Two skyfish and dew leaf. Yeah. And our initial caravan, our starting caravans, only have six crates, so inventory management is. Uh, very important in this. So let's see, what do I want to do? That does not help me. No, maybe. Yes. I will take two dew leaf and one skyfish. Placing one of my crates. Buyer. Okay. Yeah, I know what's about to happen. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, I suppose I should look at my contracts. I don't need them. I, <laughs> I can it. win without them. I'll take them. Wow, points. you'll just spot us the near 50 points or so. <laughs> That's a, that is a bold strategy, Cotton. <laughs> we shall see, right? Ooh, ooh. No combination that I really want. Aw, sad buyer. It is appropriate to call clock on a player. Yeah, who's yeah. Okay, analysis. so here's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> is I want to go here to get the goods for this cart, but I get the sneaking suspicion that somebody's going to take this, which means I won't be able to buy the wagon anyways, and I'll get snaked out of it. So. 
Yeah, that sounds awful. <sighs> Going last in turn order is bad. But you did start with four more. Yeah, that's true. I'll take two bucks. Ember yeah. Spice and one. Not all of us. Yeah. Give me that spice and that ice. While you were busy gathering all that wealth, Daniel was getting the early worm. Or he was the early bird. He was the getting worm. the early worms. Yeah. yeah well, those worms. are the first <laughs> ones, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so back to you, Daniel. Yes. I think I'm going to go here to get the. So two, two blue, eight. two ever ice, and one ember spice? Yeah, two, so two blue ice. and a red? Spice. Let's get them. All right. Let's see. Let's see now. Is that helpful? I accidentally put one from back here out there, so I'm going to fix that. I will. Yes, please don't cheat on camera. <laughs> <laughs> don't let him fool you. <laughs> Buyer <laughs> cheated on multiple games of Papillon. I did not. scoring. Okay, I did math wrong. While one. somehow maintaining plausible deniability. <laughs> <laughs> I think I remember that, actually. I think I was there for that. Yeah. Uh, all right, Buyer. Uh, double yellow. Two skyfish. Two skyfish. In the crate. Yeah. Done. Alrighty. Now, do I get access to the guy right away? Yes, you, you do. do. Perfect. Alright. Um, then we will get a guy. Go here. Okay. And we will get so skyfish and uh, ever eyes. Ever eyes. That's the one I'm looking for. Yeah. And seven bucks. Seven dollars. Some big bucks I'm asking for. Yeah. Okay. So then Daniel takes that caravan card, adding it to his caravan. To get right there. He gains the access to one of his other six or his other three workers immediately. Yeah. That's why he came out earlier. He was just so eager. Yeah, to come out. he was very excited <laughs> at the prospect of working with him. Uh, I will then a good employer, what can I say? Stamp a contract. Ooh, that's fast. I will uh, complete my contract to the Everice Suppliers Guild. Uh, they wanted me to transport two Everice and one Dew Leaf for them. So at the end of the game, that will be worth 21 points. And at, during each arrival phase, I get a free Everice. Assuming, of course, that I have space in my crates. That sounds so a long stamp spot here. There it is. There it is. Oh, <clears throat> boy. Worst. Your breakfast isn't setting well. You can yeah. get the your good night's rest. You can get the what? No. The other wagon that as far as green that I don't have. Sell some goods, baby. <laughs> I don't think so. That's unfortunate. Everything about this page is unfortunate for me. Just so you know, it's buyer's poor play that he's <laughs> suffering from. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I could sell goods, but I think I'm just going to take. You want to go? Oh no, you've already gone there. there. Yeah, you can't go to the shop. <clears throat> and get I'm going to take goods, I'm, but I'm going to end up dumping some cargo here. Uh, ah, that's an efficient operation you're running over there. Well, unfortunately, the contracts I just built are not conducive to cashing in early, so uh, I'll do that. And get a uh, skyfish and a spice. I'm gonna dump the Everice. Okay. Okay, and then for our last action, I'll get two skyfish. Very, very strong. So power plays. Indeed. Okay, once all players, once all workers have been placed that can be placed, there are occasionally times where there are no further legal placements, in which case you can't place. But once all workers that can be placed have been placed, uh, we go into the end phase. So our workers return to our, our caravans. And then we are going to bid for the guide. Now, <clears throat> there is 
uh, a unique twist on the hidden bid mechanism in this game, the blind bid. We will select uh, an amount of gold that we wish from behind our screen in our hand and put it out. I'm sure many of you watching are familiar with that version of this system. Once everyone is ready, we will reveal the player who bid the most wins the bid. However, they must only pay the amount that the player who bid the least bid to the supply. So if Daniel bids 30 and I bid 29 and buyer bids zero, Daniel remains guide and pays zero to the supply. Mm -hmm. So everyone is encouraged to mix it up a little. Only the player who wins the bid <clears throat> must yeah. pay. And in the event of a tie, the guide wins the tie remaining guide. Like even if you can't win, you can force the winner to pay money. Yeah, you'd like to force a price on them of some sort. All right, I'm ready. Two. Five. Two. Somebody's not going last anymore. So I'll pay two. Sick of it. Oof, look, new, new guide in town. So now Daniel will choose one of the two. I'm sorry, buyer will choose one of the two destinations. We can either journey to the Cloud Monastery, uh, respect the solitude of this holy place. But no, we're going to go Canyon. Oh, I like the canyon. Razor Beak Canyon. All right. So carefully negotiate the perilous bridges of this popular tourist spot. Now he reveals the encounter card. A sweaty man races up to your caravan and thrusts his scroll into your hands. Oh, <laughs> he no. says to the mason, the Family message show. must be delivered to the next city, but he's out of time. He asks you to deliver it and promises a reward. He runs away without any further instructions. The guy, that's me, because I paid $2 for it, or chooses. Two victory points. Yeah. We, we can either deliver the scroll, and each player gains one good, or we open it and roll the die and either gain six gold or get nothing. Well, so I support, since I'm loaded up on good, I support gaining a good. We're going to roll the die. Yeah. Right. I imagine that would be the one. There you go. And if I roll a four, five, or six, it's gibberish and we get nothing. If it's a one, two, or three, it turns out there's gold inside and we get six gold. Wow. And it's fire. Perfect. We get nothing. Just the way fire likes it. We get nothing. <laughs> You lose. We Good day, on. sir. <laughs> okay. I knew he would be a bad guy. I yeah, I knew, right? And of I course, feel like he, I came out ahead of him. He bought his position of power, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So Those now, you, now we turn to page three in the almanac for Razorbeak Canyon. Buyer, read yes. the war. <clears throat> the wind whips through the canyon and carrier with it. It carries with it the fearsome screech of razor beaks. Keep close to one another as you cross the canyon bridges, for razor beaks are known to capture lone traders and take them to their nests. Despite the danger, many thrill-seeking tourists come here to marvel at these magnificent yet mortifying beasts. So on this map, uh, there are a series of bridges across uh, the canyon here. And the first worker placed on each bridge has to be placed on one of the end spaces, and then the subsequent workers on those bridges have to be placed adjacent to a worker that's already on there. So you're going to work your way across the bridge. Mm -hmm. um, set up, uh, we need the tourist tokens. So page three, page three please. Yes. And then those are going to go here. So if you acquire a tourist token, you're going to place it in one of your cargo spaces uh, and one of your holds. And every time we enter a new location, they're going to pay you two gold for it. For that location because you're taking them on a grand tour of the dragon road yes exactly and this is an example of some of the location specific bits yeah uh, most pages have their own tokens that are unique to their page correct and uh, while I am getting these out of my hastily labeled prototype baggies there will be a full insert as part of the game that's going to come with a sticker sheet that labels the page number for the yeah, various for the, spots. A, quick, a way to quickly and easily access right. all the things. Exactly. Because you certainly won't use all of them in, in, in every game as you don't visit every location. Can we get new uh, carts, please? Yes, so the old uh, caravans go away. Reveal the same number as the amount of players. All right. That's what I'm talking about. All right, since I'm the guy, I get to go first. I'm going to purchase a wagon. Okay. Uh, I will pay... Oh, and I get one ever ice. Six dollars and two skyfish. To get this one. And 
that that will give me another worker. And that's it for me. Hmm. <laughs> so one of the things that's interesting about this particular board is it you, you can't just consider what you're taking, but you must consider the space that you're opening up for mm -hmm. your rivals. Yes. So with that in mind, I will go here and get two Ever Ice and one Ember Spice. Hopefully, I don't know if you guys have much Skyfish, so hopefully that doesn't do too much for y'all. Dang it. Hmm. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> they're just right there. They're just, they're begging to work. <laughs> Uh, let's see, friends. what do we want to do? That's probably pretty good for me. Looks like that. I will take... two Ember Spice and one Skyfish. No, no, you gotta go. <sighs> no, no. Once, oh, no. The, once the bridge is started. Mm, interesting. Mm. I'll go here. So I'll get Skyfish, Ember Spice, and Dew Wave. So now that right, opens so. up uh, the sh take a shop action option here, the door. Uh, which allows a player who goes there to choose one of three possible options. They can take a guard, which will stay with them for their journey and add, permanently add two strength to their caravan and be worth one fame at the end of the game. They can take one of any good, or they can sell as many of a single good type as they wish for three gold of each good of that type. So I will go ahead and just keep following the path I set and go to this one and I'll sell two skyfish for six bucks. Okay. Six magical bucks. Six each or no total. Six magical bucks each. Six yes. dragons. <laughs> Since I'm already cheating, I might as well. Wow. Just whole then, I mean <laughs> I guess cheating is cheating. A little cheating is just, you know. Like they already know. You're you know, quibbling, they already right? Know. What's the point? <laughs> Where's the edge in cheating a little? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. So, and I will take a shop action. Okay. And I will sell my two Ember Spice for a total of six gold. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and complete a contract. <clears throat> I am going to complete this contract for the Cloud Ship Fishing Company, which, after I gain one Skyfish. No, oh, I can't complete this. I have my resources mixed up. I'm not going to go there. Okay. That's. So I can not stamp, I could not stamp, I could overflow on Ember Spiders. Or I could sell some. Hmm. Hmm, indeed. Yeah, I guess I will. Uh, I'm going to sell two of them just for four bucks. Okay. Because, I don't know if you mentioned it, but you must take an action. You can't just go on a space and... Right, if action. there is a legal, yeah, and if there is a legal option, you have to take So, it. like, if you go on a sell space, you right. have to sell at least one? Right. Right, like, I, because I couldn't complete the contract, I can't go to that complete space and no, just not just do block. it. Just block. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, then I will. And uh, I do have a contract to complete. The Ember Spice 
wholesale company. So two ever ice, let's see, do it this way. Two ever ice and a skyfish. And it says it's worth 18 fame at the end of the game. And I may substitute two ember spikes for one good of any other type. Wow. So that's pretty sweet. Well, and that's at any time. time. So at any time, time you would need to pay a good, you could pay two ember spikes instead. Hmm. Well, not super excited about my options here. So I will go here. And I will take one Everice. As we all delicately dance around trying to prevent each other from getting wagons <laughs> or caravans. I just want to get a tourist. Yeah, I was. I wanted a tourist as well. Fill up one of my crates with a looky loo and get paid. Uh... And how does this work again? So, uh, if you go on one of these two spaces, which yeah. this is the only one that's going to be possible, possible, if if I go there, which I'm not going to, yeah, uh, it would sit and take up one of your one of your holds, and then every time we go to a new location, you would get two gold. Right, okay. and there are gotcha. four more locations. Yeah, so, so it, just, it would just, generate eight yeah. gold. It's a nice little or if you had two tours. Yeah. Which you just run this a, possible. Run, run a travel agency. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even taking to, you know, hey, supplies. Um, merchant covers a lot yeah. of ground, right? Like, <laughs> as long as you're, you know, selling something, in this case a service. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and earning gold. So my options really are those. Yeah, I'll go here. I'm gonna take the two ice and the no, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I'll take the two ice and the leaf. There you go. Okay. That doesn't have a ton of options for me. Um a little poopy block going on over here. I think we'll just go ahead and take Okay, all workers that can be placed have been placed, so they're going to return home. Then we're going to bid for guide. Three? Three. Three. Buyer pays three and remains the guide. Go ahead and uh, I'll take the first tokens out. Where are we going? Uh, let's see. We're going to go to... Do you want to show off your cool camel tokens? Yes, we're going to go to the Emperor's Sands. And our encounter. In the middle of the road are the marred remains of an abandoned cart. It is unfortunate for the previous passengers, but you consider yourself lucky that whatever made those teeth marks did not care about the goods inside. Oh, great. Starting with the guide, place a worker on an unoccupied space and gain those goods. So awesome. this is uh, <clears throat> one of my favorite kind of encounters that we have, where it, it actually like creates spaces for you to use workers on in between pages. All I've noticed is that since buyer became guide, we read somebody's mail and tried to get stuff, <laughs> and then now we're benefiting from the mis yeah. so misfortune I'm, of somebody's I'm wrecked. Gonna, I'm gonna take. I'm sure they just left it. Yeah. Question the scruples of. Uh, Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> don't you worry about what we're doing over here. I will guide you. <laughs> At least we can say we were just, you know, following the guide. We were just following orders. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll take two Ember Spice. Oh, but I, oh, wait. Well, I guess I'll uh, take an Ever Ice since that's what I was going to get for free anyway. My limited. Oh, yeah. Caravan okay. size over here. And then we're going to flip to page seven. Okay. Okay. Page seven. We'll need new uh, caravan yep. cards. Yep. Yep. 
to the Emperor Sands. You never thought the desert would end. Then suddenly on the horizon you spy the shapes of, great, of the great city of Sands. The Emperor's court commissioned massive pyramids to honor their child ruler. Within these pyramids live the nobles with which you are eager to barter. The higher you venture, the greater the trade. Um, <clears throat> so the placement rules for this one is uh, you can only place your workers on the bottom spaces or directly above the two. So basically they're going to be standing on the shoulders of the people below them. Yep. Um, this map, I will point out, has special two-player instructions, which we don't care about because there's only two do, players, actually. but some maps will have special rules specifically for two players. Uh, we're going to put the two camel tokens here, and I the camel spaces. Yeah. A player can place a worker on a camel space. Uh, you have to pay three gold, and then you take one of these camel tokens, and then it just becomes a part of your caravan. Oh. And is just an, awesome. oh, a wagon, effectively a wagon that holds two... Has two crates. Has two crates, but is not worth any points. Uh, but it's a it's a three dollar card, which is cool. Yes. Uh, and I'm still first. And there's no contact on the bottom row. Yeah. Here's a stamp. Here's a stamp. This one allows you to take more contracts. You can never have more than two incomplete contracts at one time, so that's something to keep in mind. So they have to be two adjacent workers will then let you stand on top of it. Right. So something like this now makes this spot available. Gotcha. Now they don't have to be your workers. It's any workers. Right. Okay. I think I'm just going to sell some numbers. You'll get $10. Hmm. Interesting. You're unfortunate for me. All right. Well. Uh, we will just go here, and I guess I'll just go to Ember Spice. Uh, take one back. I'm What's happening? I think I only have oh, I see. space for it. Mm. Oh, okay. We'll go here and sell two Skyfish for eight fantasy bucks or gold if you prefer. Mm. Two do leaf and an ever so I'm gonna jettison the skyfish. Okay, I will go here and complete this contract. Honorable veterans of the Great Dragon War. Um, it says each guard, each of your guards provides an additional strength, and it'll cost me two skyfish, a uh, do leaf, and an uh, ever ice. And that's worth 27 points. Ooh. Hmm. We'll do that. I'm going to take a guard. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Let's all settle down. Got six. Okay. I'll take two ember spice and a sky fish. Yeah, that's not what that spice is. That's oh, too doodly for the doodly. sky fish. Oh, is that mistake. what you want? Uh, or do you want ember spice? We'll take the doodly. If you're willing to give me the ember spice, <laughs> not a okay. That's fair. I will take two skyfish. I'll take two ice. Is it? Okay. I come home. Put these away. Oh, sad. We're all keeping each other from getting all the good yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Him is actively conspiring to keep me from having fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. That's kind of his. Empire. I'm the guy with one wagon, and I'm the one stopping people. I have less. I have fewer workers it's than called, anybody. It's called envy. Wow. Man, <laughs> such propaganda. <laughs> so this is an outrage. Rather. I have no control. I'm playing last with the fewest workers, <laughs> and I somehow ruining buyer's day. Yes, as usual. Such is my, such is the greatness of my power. And flip it. I Four. got two. I got six. All right. Pay two. Pay two. Pays two. Finally, we can Finally, get back I'm not to first. being a <laughs> be a decent being first has decent really human beings. Progress. Yeah, it must be awful. All right, go ahead and put the. Where are we going pick, first? Pick, pick first, first. Right? Oh, right, right. So, what are the descriptions? So, of River Town Landing is a river map where we're going to start at the top and work our way down the river. Okay. And, and Sublin Salts is one where you're going to be diving down into the ocean. Ooh, you um, have a finite amount of air in yeah. your tank. That sounds like fun. Let's do supplement uh, salt. Eh? Yeah. Interesting. All right. The spider's web blocks the path ahead. It's fine. The beast has ensnared many an unfortunate soul. Their belongings scattered about the dark trail ahead. You hear a chittering. The web vibrating with sudden intensity. You may be able to quickly scavenge the spoils, but at risk of being a snack. So, we can either fight the spider, and they have six strength, um, which I am in a decent position to do, but I don't really think, it, like, I want to kind of do it just to show it off, but I also don't, the, if you win, get two goods, if you lose, you discard three. It's not really worth it to me at the moment. The buyer loses on the streams all the time, so <laughs> you go ahead. I'm going to choose the D6 option. If it gets so, around to me, I'm going to roll it up. I'm not going to try to fight that. Um... And then the other one is flee, which is, uh, and we do this free to right. us. Right. So this isn't, so it's going to, so defeated. starting with you, you have the choice to either fight or flee. Oh, gotcha. If you choose to fight and you defeat it, then it's, the encounter is over. If you choose to flee, then you get whatever the flee result is. And then we move to the next person where they also have the same option to fight or flee. So there's three kinds of encounters. There's kinds that are uh, like these, which are just unique encounters or, or special encounters. There's these where they're Option optional, fight. optional fight encounters. So you can fight if you want to, mm -hmm. or you can do something else. And then there's some that are just fights where you don't have a choice. So at the moment, I'm at a five strength in my caravan because I get the bonus to my guard due to my yeah. uh, contract. You get about a 50-50 chance of winning. It's a 50-50 chance of winning, but the, I only get one good effectively um, unless I, I can, I mean, I don't really have anything in particular I'm going for, so only one good, and as opposed to a, and then I lose three good if I lose at 50-50. So I think it's better for me to just flee. Okay. And because even if I lose that, the the chances of losing are smaller, 
And if I lose that, then I only lose two goods. Just there's no positive outcome. Since you're not stronger. Yeah. All right, so I escape with no effect. All right, so now it comes to me. I only have a strength of three in my... Is, is it even a caravan if there's just one? <laughs> right, wagon. I, too, will flee. Less effectively, though, losing two goods. Run away. Uh, okay, right, no effect. Because buyer's having a rough game. Because <laughs> <laughs> I am having a rough game. All right. Every action I want to take, I can't take. Oh. All right, so we go to page 11, the sub one song. Look at all those cool places where you're just, <clears throat> just cruising right past. All right, past. go ahead and... Uh... Beneath the coastal waves and the coral beds below lies the sunken city of Sublin Salt. Its merfolk denizen are so eager to trade, they have cleverly devised a means for first-time visitors to breathe underwater. However, the deeper you travel in Sublin Salt, the more air it requires. The good news is the merfolk will happily provide those that run out of air with more, at a cost, of course. All right, so there is this track here on the side of the board. This is the air supply. Uh, so players have to play, pay air to place their workers on a space. And the, the end of each row is a number. That's the amount of air you have to pay to place a worker on those spaces. Uh, if you can't pay, then you have to make up the difference in gold. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do either, then you just can't place a worker. And we all start up here. Right? Yeah. So, okay. when I get a, so you all, we all start with 15 air. Gotcha. Well, aside from that, we can play it wherever. Anywhere that's room you want. Yeah. Okay. And then how do the coral spaces? So the, yeah, sorry, the unique coral spaces, which are down here and here. Uh, after you place a worker on a coral bed space, you gain a number <coughs> of goods shown on that space equal to the amount that you currently have in your crate. So you get to double whatever color you place on. Cool. All right. And then we... We did not reset these. Three new ones. Okay, cool. So the good news is for a lot of us, for some of us, anyway, it's much easier to get wagons here. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Um, but it's on that note, I'm going to take a wagon. And I'm blue, so I go down two. And I will take this one right here for a red and a green, a dew leaf and ember spice and seven buckaroos. All right. And then it'll get me this meeple that keeps trying to poke out. Join. <laughs> All right. I will finally get my second caravan card. I will pay two skyfish and Six gold. Adding this, getting me my fourth maple, which is very exciting. I'll pay one to stamp a contract. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do. Good, I have the money for it. The Gilded Bank of Dragon City, which is going to be three dew leaf and two ever ice. And this says, after I sell at least one good, I gain one extra gold, and it is worth 30 points. Okay. Um, I will go ahead and spend five. Down eight. I'll just go ahead and double my Ember Spice. So you're going to get eight? Uh, four more. Or you're going to go up to eight. Let's see. I will take, I will spend one and take uh, an Ember Spice, an Ever Ice, and a Skyfish. So much room in my caravan now. <laughs> so much room for activities. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny, but I mean, you feel it. Like, I yeah. felt constricted. I'm excited, you know, <laughs> not just for the extra worker, but I mean, you do have, that's part of the fun of this, is not only do you get the sense of traveling, but you get the sense of building something. Like, yeah. At the end, my wife, she loves games where at the end, people compare the awesome thing they've built. 
And as long as she's happy with what she, she built, what she's not necessarily upset whether she wins or loses. Yeah. And I, I played this with her recently, and she really enjoyed it. Um. All right. I spent another four. He's reckless with his air. I, 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 you know, so untroubled by eight, such concerns. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll get forty. What are you? Hey, you big spender. All right. <clears throat> well, now this does not provide a worker, but it does provide more much-needed cargo space. Uh, a red, a yellow. And eight. All right. This is the first time I've been able to play this board since uh, the cool air tanks. As we always joke on our stream, by the time the games are pretty, I don't get to play them anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> it's really uh, it's fun to have the air tanks on there. Uh, I'm gonna stamp another contract. Stamp. The Cloud Ship Fishing Company for two Ember Spice and three Skyfish. After I gain at least one Skyfish from a gain good space, I gain one extra Skyfish. Ooh, so nice. All right, and that's worth thirty-three points. For those of you scoring it up. For those of you keeping drift. <clears throat> so I can go down to zero <clears throat> air, right? Yeah. yeah, you just have to. You pay can for even her. you can go below, but you have to pay yeah. for each air beyond one gold per. But as long as I'm at like, if it takes me to zero, then I'm fine. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. All right, um, not that one. Uh, this one. Oof, contracts. How many is that that you draw? Is it three? Draw three, three keep one? Three? Draw three, yeah. keep one. Draw yes, three, keep three and one. keep one. Right on the inside of my handy dandy player screen. And the two you don't pick will go on the bottom of the deck. I gotta say, I'm very excited about my final action on this board. Yeah. Gonna sit down to six. And I'm going to double the ever ice in my crates. I have four, so I'll gain four ever ice. Thank you. Skyfish plus one from the fishing contract and whatever, Ember Spice. Six. And Daniel? Yeah. <coughs> All right. Get a guard. And that's knocks me to zero. All right. For the record. All, uh, Workers that can be placed have been, so they come home. And <clears throat> now we bid. Ready? Yeah. 10? 20. 20. Oh, you pay 10. Yep. Yeah, Daniel pays 10. Change. <clears throat> wow, I thought I was bidding high. No. There you go. <clears throat> and put these up. So there's the Vineland Tract, which is a path around where you're creating. It is cool. Crosses. Intersecting cool. combos. Uh, Ever Ice is the most valuable thing there. Horizon Isles is. Uh, there's a bunch of different islands, and you are progressing through this island chain and getting bonus actions for bridges that you cross on your way down. And there is a little diving mini game in there where you can uh, dive for treasure, but there might be a sea monster. Yeah, so combos or bonuses? Yeah. Um, go with Horizon Isles. Boo! The hate draft Ex continues. Excellent choice. 
Here's the encounter. <laughs> okay. I mean, I would have done the same. No, that's why I bit ten. When somebody doubles their ever eyes. All right. A man comes limping from the forest, out of breath. He asks for help, but something isn't right. You notice the dagger tucked into his belt, as well as the pouch beside it. So you can either fight the man, he has nine strength, and you gain eight or you lose ten. Or you trust the man, and at a roll of one or three, he pays, so each player gains five gold, or he betrays you, and each player loses gold equal to the result of the dice roll. Uh, I feel good about trusting him. Well, you as the guide have a choice. Yeah, that's yeah. up to you. Uh, I'm going to fight him. Okay. Wonderful. I'm rooting for you. Get him. <laughs> Slay him. So I'm currently at three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. Do it. Because right. of my plus. But maybe, Anything but an X. I say maybe this will be a chance to talk about the auto fail. Oh yeah. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully not. <laughs> Woo! Almost. All right. Almost. All right. <laughs> so I gain eight. Just so for the eight monies. Yeah. Refund. Yeah, you spent ten and you got eight back, but you denied me a lot. So I guess it's a pure win. <laughs> I get this for entering the new location. Right. And this goes over yeah, yeah. page 15. Page 15. Uh, so there will is, only this is be... This the second to last location. Yeah, one more. This is... After this will be the uh, one of the two Dragon City spaces. And we got some places. We don't need the diving tokens. Yes. Uh, page 15. Go ahead and spread <coughs> new one. Horizon Isle. Isles. Isles. <laughs> the road brings you to the ferry port where a pittance of gold buys you safe passage to the Horizon Isles. The trade to be had in these towering bluffs are well worth the journey. A merchant that is brave enough to traverse the sea soaked bridges will be greeted with a multitude of trading opportunities. Be sure to visit the shops and vendors that call these long bridges their own. Um, so we're all going to start. Uh, these islands are color coded uh, to help differentiate the uh, islands. And there's a compass. And there's a compass up in the corner. Um, but we're all going to start on one of the spaces on the northernmost island. And then uh, to place other workers, you can either place on your current island or an island that is one bridge length away. And the bridges are denoted by these uh, circles with the, the bonus actions in them. When you would place a worker on a new island, you will first resolve the bonus action and then place your worker there. So if I wanted to go from here to here, I would do the complete a contract first. Assuming then, you're able. And then place here. This, these bonuses do not adhere to the same rule as placement rules. So if gotcha. you can't complete the bonus, you can still place on this island. You just miss out on the opportunity for the bonus. Because you only get the bonus the first time you place it on a new island. Right. Okay. Cut. What? The gonna, drive tokens. No, I'm not going to cut the drive tokens. Now, these, these dive tokens, there's a space here, 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 and here. The dive tokens, uh, when you take that action, you're going to reveal tokens one at a time. Uh, you can stop whenever you want. And when you choose to stop, you'll either bust on the sea monster, or you'll get the amount of gold that you have revealed, and then you'll mix the tiles back up and uh, reset the stack. Mm, okay, cool. But you can start from any island. You, you have start, to start, you have on, to the start on the big, island. On the start on the big green island at the top. Yep. And you can stay on there as long as you want. But yep. Sure. Okay. Go. If that's what you're into. You are up, Daniel. Okay, let's see here. Let us go with... We'll take... Uh, one of everything but skyfish. Thank you. I will take two skyfish and a dew leaf. Um, I will take <clears throat> two ever ice and one skyfish and then a bonus skyfish because of my contract. Mm. Mm -hmm. Delicious. So now you have the option to place on one of the three connected islands, or you could place on green. Okay. Oh, Jason Funk in the house. Oh, we love the Funk. Jason. He said he really wants to play again. 
Oh man, you're gonna love it, Jason. Now that it's uh, really getting close to its final form, it's it's gorgeous. It's almost leveled up. Yeah, it's yeah. super sad. <laughs> you haven't even seen its final form. So. <laughs> um, we're going to go here. Okay. So you're gonna do the wagon first, first, Caravan. and then you'll get the space that you place on. All right. So we'll take that one. So Which one? This one. So that is uh, Ever Ice and a Dew Leaf and eight. The ability that you got from fighting the man. Yeah, from the, <laughs> just the random man. <laughs> who Super buff random man. Um, and that gets me my last meeple, so I no longer have to cheat. They're all out in the open. Look at that. Progress. Just trying to reconcile, you know. Uh, and then I get this. So it's two do uh, two uh, ever ice and an, an ember spice. You? I will have some fun. You go diving. I'm going diving, but first I will purchase uh, this caravan for a skyfish and uh, ever ice and eight fantasy bucks. And extend my caravan, getting up to five workers. That's nice. And now it's time to go diving. All right. Come. And sea monster. <laughs> Three gold. Do I want to press my luck? The answer is yes, I want to press my Always. luck. Yeah. One more gold. The answer is I want to press my Let's luck. Let's do it. <gasps> oh, sea monster. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> well, there goes that guy. <laughs> yeah. I'm the higher yeah. guy. And we're back yeah. to poor workers. No. <laughs> <laughs> you lose. Good day, sir. Uh, I am going to. Could go ahead and place here. I don't have a contract to complete, so I won't do that. But I will sell 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26 including the skyfish. Ooh. 26? Oh, yeah, because you get the Because I shell. get one bonus. Every time I sell at least one, I get one extra. Okay. go over here from here or, or no do I have to keep following the so path you on? can <clears throat> as long as you can are on an island you can connect it by bridge so you can go to any of these two okay if you go to this one you have the well, I guess it's the same one but yeah. yeah if there were two different paths that you could take to like a, an island one. yeah you choose which you choose you which. so like if I was here here and here and I hadn't gone to this island yet I'd have the choice between these two gotcha okay So, I will go here and take, so, take two Ember Spice going. Yeah. So, are you going to complete a contract? Yes. Okay. So, Ember Spice. Ever ice and the skyfish. The bone and blood weapon alliance. Each your guard provide an addition. <laughs> Just keep your two ember spice. Yes, I'll right. take the rest. Oh, no. So your guards are monsters. Yep. Uh, I like to be well protected. I guess, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Let's see. Going to place some home island. 
Pick up blue, yellow, and green. Okay. Okay. Buy. And you know, I mean, this is an example, like we're playing this game pretty hard. This is a light, you know, it, very family weight game, mm -hmm. uh, but you can, you know, we're three absolute killers <laughs> and you can play this game very hard and very mean. So it's very scalable as to what your particular preference of play is. Certainly there are random elements, you know, we have random encounters, we have the dice rolls of occasion. You don't know exactly what's going to come up, but there is a great deal of skill coupled with that, you know, adventure, travel, you know, it's always going to be a little different each time you play. Right. Well, right. Place here. I'm going to gain uh, an Empress Vice on my way through and then just sell it. Okay. So I'm going to take uh, 10 plus 1. All right. Daniel? <clears throat> okay. I will take um, Skyfish, uh, Duleaf, and Ember Spice. And also look at some contracts before I do that, I guess. So it's Skyfish, Dooley, and Ember Spice? Yes, yeah, so just no Ever Ice. Well, he contemplates that. I will. Give me the right answer. Mm. That I will place here, but I will complete a contract first. Three Ever Ice, two Skyfish, the Morning Dew Leaf Company. After you gain at least one Dew Leaf from a gain good space, gain an extra Dew Leaf. Oh, oh looky there. There's Dew Leaf. What are the odds? Yeah. It's, it's almost, almost like, like I planted it or something. <laughs> two ever ice and two dew leaf. So so strange. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bar. So it looks like you're having a pretty solid game over here, Daniel. Yeah, it's all right, you mm -hmm. know. I'm I'm not complaining. That's I'll take for sure. two skyfish plus a bonus skyfish. Okay. That's it for me. So was that from you coming to and from this? That's from my contract. That's oh, first contract. Every time he's I gain, already been. Every there. time I gain skyfish, right. I get right. Yeah. Got it. How this game works. Um. I'll go over here, grab two skyfish before that, complete this contract. <laughs> Woo! Let's go from there, okay. Yeah. The Ember Spice per type of Pirates Guild. Um, it takes two Ember Spice and a Skyfish. Um, during the arrival phase, gain one Ember Spice for whatever that's worth. Well, exactly one Ember Spice is what it's worth. Um, yes. But I'll, I'll, if you want to just hand me one more Skyfish since I'm going to get two from here. Sure. Thank you. I could do that. And it's worth 20 points. Hmm. One other thing you're talking about, you know, how you can play at different levels, mm -hmm. is that as you play this game more and more, you start learning what these different areas might look like. So exactly. You can, you can start, you know, with a very uh, experienced group you know, you'll have a better idea, okay, I'm, you know, you get an idea from this, but 
once you get a, a, oh, yeah. an H, uh, once you know how to play, the value of being guide goes up more for right. You know, denial or uh, getting yourself on the path that you think is most beneficial. This one might even say that it's like a merchant who's experienced on yeah. that particular a journey. A well-traveled right? merchant. So uh, I've been here before. <laughs> my nose tells me that. All right, so let's see. I am not super thrilled with what I got going on here. I'm not too concerned about that. I'm not really concerned about that. I'm a lot concerned about all those contracts. That's nothing to be done about that. Uh, yeah. Um. You can trust me with contracts. Can't do anything there. Can't do anything there. That doesn't do it. That doesn't do it. I, I don't feel like fighting the sea monster again. I almost had a good space. I don't want to do that. Maybe I just do that. No, I can't. So, diversify my funds a little bit. Maybe I do want to see Monster. Do it. I think I might want to see Monster. Do it. Do it. Do it. All right. Okay. I will. Uh, I will see Monster. I will take a Skyfish from here as I cross. And I will see how this goes. Sea Monster. There we go. <laughs> Just for the record. <laughs> there is, was it, did you not shuffle after the I, I, I did? did shuffle. Oh. I, could, I, I would like to lie about it, but there's only one Sea Monster in there. So, right to it. Let's <laughs> <laughs> not, not no, waste any it. time. Aww. All right, Daniel, Good. you have at the least, last foot. At least two of your additional workers have more wasted actions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record. Makes up the fact that I've been having caravans sniped from left, left and right all game. <laughs> you were in charge. Yeah, Half it was game. terrible. All right, uh, Daniel, last out action. I think, at, he, I think he's going to kill us. We were at pages that it was terrible to go first if I wouldn't come caravans. So just to clarify, since I have not taken this bridge, if I go here, I can get No, it. no, it's no, placing it's, on the island. The, oh, first time. on the island. Oh, so the only bonus. island you're not present on is this little okay, guy right so. here. So that's the only place a bonus remains. Huh? I think that might be what I do, though. Surely you're out of contracts to complete. <laughs> 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 I brought one with me, just in case. Yeah. Um, but I'll go ahead and just get another wagon, I guess. Sure, oh, now I remember why my game is struggling. The active hatred of let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so four bucks change for that. What do you want? A wagon. Do you want change for that? Yeah, just one. And we'll just tack that on to the end. That's it. Oh, and you get your two... Green, right? Yeah, too green. Okay, workers come home. It is time to bid for the guide for the last time. go to the dockside arcade where there's gambling and uh, shipping things out via docks or the courtyard markets where uh, you race to the most valuable stalls uh, we're gonna go to the courtyard markets oh, I can't feel like <laughs> all 
All right, here's your encounter. Please be a dragon. Dang it. <laughs> I was open too. You know how much strength I have. Kill the dragon. I got, like, yeah, 4, 8, 9, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> no one's impressed, David. Two famous deities, Rock the Higher and Rock the Lesser, <laughs> right. have statues along this trail. Offering plates are carved into their bases, and the right donations could award you a nice benefit. Which will you choose? The higher or lesser? So you can either offer, starting with the guide, you either offer two gold to rock the lesser, and then you roll. Um, and if you get one or two, you get a curse, which discards goods of your choice equal to the result of the die roll. So that'd be one or two, is that right? Mm -hmm. And then, or a blessing, which is gain gold equal to the result of the dice roll. Um, or you can offer seven to rock the higher, which gets you um, a blessing, which is for one to four, which is gain goods equal to the result of the dice roll, or a curse, which is discard gold equal to the one. Right. So we'll go with, um, I'll need to change for this. Um, for what? What are you doing? Uh, You're going to offer, the higher? Yeah, higher, yeah. All right, so you get 13 back. Yes. See if Rock the Higher listens. I'm surprised you just didn't throw a fifth the other going. I need change for this. I'm paying four. Yeah. And while you're at I it, I don't have small bills. And while you're at it, I'm God, get you yourself too. something nice. <laughs> Keep a little something for yourself. Be a deer. Be. All right, so two. So I get two goods of my choice. So I'll get two Ember Spice. Okay. Yeah. I will offer uh, two gold to rock the lesser. See if one random effect can go in my favor. Okay. No. <laughs> three. Uh, yeah, yes. Three gold. Three gold. Woo. I only lost one. Net, netted one. All right, netted one. Hey, I'll take it. That's by far the best randomness I've had. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read this. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll do seven. Try and get some goods here. So, please don't screw me. Ooh, so lose six cool. Gold. cool, cool, cool. Everything, hot shooter, everything hot going shooter. according to plan. All right, so don't have to worry about buyer. <laughs> yeah, I, <know. laughs> I have been effectively eliminated. <laughs> Okay. All right, the bustling courtyard markets are the center of Dragon City. It is here at the end of your journey where the wealthiest patrons indulge in frivolous transactions. It is also here that the renowned sculptors of the Rund honor the city's glory with their opulent dragon statues. Competition is fierce, so close your deals quicker than the competition. Uh, let's see. Placement. After player places a worker in the main market, so this section up here is the main market. Uh, the, they sell the gold in that column at the price for that row. So you're going to place anywhere in these intersections Correct. and you'll get whatever that is. So skyfish for five, six, or seven. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> down here are the four dragon statue tokens. After you place a worker there, you're going to discard the indicated goods. So there's a combination of two goods for each of these statues. Each of which is worth 12. Yeah, they're worth 12 fame each um, during end of game scoring. And then the key to the Dragon City, uh, whoever sells the greatest variety of goods, so variety, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> is going to... Receive. I lost my space. You're going to get the, the key. Which and if there's a tie, me. the player with this uh, worker furthest to the left is going to work. Gotcha. Okay. So this uh, eight, eight dollar Ember Spice is the, the, the best tiebreaker you can get. Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, Daniel, lead the way. And does like can anyone as many people be put on that, or is that no? Just, that's just a solo just space. Okay. It just fits the structure. Got gotcha. it. That's nice. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and just go here for um, Ever Ice, Skyfish, and Ember Spice. Ice. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and sell all of my Everice for six apiece. 
That's a lot. Oh, uh, no one has any incomplete contracts at this point, although there is the opportunity to acquire one more. Uh, should you find yourself in a position that you uh, are out of workers and you have not completed a contract or contracts, uh, you still have the opportunity without an action to complete any contracts you have, assuming you have the goods necessary, by paying five gold. Uh, to do so, and that would prevent the loss of points. Certainly, it's less than ideal, but it's also less than losing all of the points. So, and, and taking negative. Exactly, points. exactly. So, there is a opportunity there, and sometimes that's the best option because it lets you make better use of your work. Right. So it just depends. Uh, I'm gonna go here and take a red, green, and two yellow. I don't have the space. I'm just going to take one. Okay. Just go ahead and sell. Yeah. In case somebody decides to go in there and dump a one on you. Yeah, I was afraid. Who would do that? What kind of, what what, kind of guy? What kind of monster would do that? I can't even begin to imagine. So it. that is uh, five of them, so that's 40. The sort of absolute monster yeah. that would engage. The degeneracy you know? would be the person to. It's, it's vile. <laughs> All right, I will take what amounts to three do leave and have skyfish for me because of my contract. Right. Uh, I'm <clears throat> take the green. They're statue. good. I mean, people, you know, don't underestimate it. It's 12 points. You? Sell, sell, sell. Oh, Two, yeah. three, four, five, six, seven. So forty two. I've almost covered your contracts. You've got some big boy <laughs> contracts over there. <laughs> Take the red blue statue. Okay. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. And goods at the end that you have left are not worth anything. happening there. That doesn't matter. It kind of could matter. It doesn't matter. Is that the best? It's kind of weird. Probably. Anything 
got going on over here? I'm worried about what I'm doing. I always worry about what you got going on. I've been out of this game since page two. Yeah, well, I understand you're not going to win, but I don't want you to stumble in and mess with my plans. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take uh, After I was two strategically block, blocked from completing a contract until the third page. <laughs> And straight up denied wagons for four pages. Uh, nobody <laughs> waited longer to get wagons than me. And yet you have more. Can I tell you? All right, fire. I'll get 22. <laughs> yes. Yeah. There you have more. All right, fire. Er, Dan. I am out of workers. <laughs> Also rocked the greater. It's uh, <laughs> kind of wrecked me. You had such hope that he would uh, provide his bounty. <laughs> I mean, yeah, statistically, it's very probable. It was much more likely for me to get all the goods. My wagons fully loaded before rolling into town, but instead he took my money and then more money, <laughs> and I got nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose it just makes sense to go here, just sell for 12. Yeah, you could block me, but it's not your best play. So. Well, you also don't have green. It's like we're. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to sell. You'll be able yeah. to outsell me. Um, so just 12. Thank you. I will buy a wagon. Two blue and a five. Or a caravan, I should say. Getting this, getting my last worker. Okay. That makes sense. Pretty smart, I suppose. <laughs> uh, and then I'll just sell these for ten. And let's see, I could get a statue. That's good for yours too. I could get a statue. Thank you. We're just which skipping would be right twelve. You can't. And that is play that is my best be. play. So we do this. We get a dragon statue. All right. Cool. So that is it. So your final score will be as follows. All your contracts added together, plus all your wagons added together, plus one for each gold that you have. Any bonuses from tokens such as keys or dragon, dragon statues, statues, or if we had collected stuff in other places. places. Uh, leftover goods are worth nothing unless you have the prophecy orb that allows you to score that, but we didn't go there. It is actually a tiebreaker on the off chance, but I don't, I don't think that's I've happen. never actually seen a tie in if you have a, games. If you have an incomplete contract, then that's going to subtract. I don't think any of us do. Correct. So just total the stuff in front of you, and that's your final score. Okay. Mm. And now we can silently do math on the internet for the next yeah, five minutes. Yes. For this. <laughs> Daniel's going to crush us. I didn't do this as bad as I thought, but I'm pretty sure it's not anywhere close to a winning score. <clears throat> Two oh seven, two oh eight. Much less than that. What did you get? Two hundred thirty-six. I have one sixty-three. Yeah. Whew. Well played, <laughs> sir. Well played. Oh, 
What can you say? What can you say? I'm a merchant extraordinaire. Yeah, yeah. I was an aspiring small businessman. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was. I really wanted to go to the Dockside Arcade because oh, yeah. uh, my familiarity with the map, I knew that you would be much more positioned. Not only because there was that one, uh, Everice is the big seller. Right. I believe it sells for eight, seven or eight in, in the max on the other end. Yeah, that makes sense because it's eight. You know, and I, and I sold uh, nine of them, so that that was a massive difference for me. But I also knew it meant you were much more likely to get the the ten there. And I mean, you're at two thirty six, I'm two eight. This is two twenty six. That's two eighteen. So yeah. it's a, you know, that I have seen several games you decided by who that, gets yeah. the the key to Dragon City. So it is very important. Well, it's just kind of like a free free points if you can play your cards right, you know, because you're still like I still got I didn't, what you wanted. Yeah, what I wanted. Sometimes less optimal, where you may have been able to sell it a higher thing, yeah. But you were able to cover that and still sell it a good price and and get what you want, and then cover that. And it's not just the fact that you get it; it's that no one else does. Yeah, and that's why, like when I played here, I did that with the understanding that like you know it wasn't I didn't get a lot for it, but right kept buyer from me also yeah where and i was in a position where you know what i had was so narrow that i really couldn't afford anybody to screw around and decide they wanted to block me right. on on blue i mean uh you know i played with far fewer workers for a long time oh, and yeah, it was yeah. only 20 or so points behind a little more than 20 points uh which had we gone to the other place for example just to show what that's like well yes they would have sold for seven apiece uh, in the dra Dockside Arcade, and mm. so, you, uh, and it also mixes up who gets the key to the Dragon City because each of them have a different uh, in-game condition on that. So it just depends, and uh, you know that's part of the sense of adventure on it. Is, I mean, you paid for the right to be guide, so let's yeah. not forget you you that you paid in straight victory points to to get that. Now I'll be honest, I wasn't upset that you were the guide most of the game because you had such strength in your caravan that allowed me. You know, not only did I, I mean, certainly I would have preferred to have more workers and even caravan space, but I got away with traveling through that game with, you know, if you discount the wagon I took at the end, only four, five, six total strength. Yeah. Because I was hiding in your shadow. I'm like, let Daniel go ahead and pay for guide and you know, beat up anything that comes along that might, might harm us. It's kind of a win-win situation because I was wanting to be guide to fight stuff and you were wanting me to be guide in case I, I fight it. Right, and you were less, you know, uh, obviously there was some effort to actively deny me the ability to sell as much blue as I wanted to on more than one right, occasion. of course. But that becomes even harder if I'm not at the back of the line. So sometimes being aware of who wants to be guide, I'll set to your left and let you decide one thing, even though it may have cost me the game. So yeah, it's hard to say. It's hard it to is say. hard to say, but it is you know it's a it's a fun game. I, I I've played it so many times, and I still enjoy playing it every time. And uh, it always feels you know different and new, even as you get you know uh, better at it. Uh, you know, it's not chess, multiplayer chess, or anything like that. Right, so, right. you can absolutely play better or worse. But this is not a super hardcore game, although it does tolerate hardcore play. Um, but you know, I, I liken that kind of mindset to something like Carcassonne that starts. You know, eight-year-old kids can play Carcassonne, but it can play all the way up to world championship yeah. level of skill. And uh, while it's, maybe this isn't quite that high on the skill end, it, it can accommodate all sorts of uh, skill level and interest. Makes a very kind of versatile game to have in your collection. Exactly. You know, because exactly. you can just kind of pull it out for a wide variety of circumstances, as opposed to some games where it's like I have to have like these four people playing with it, or else it's not a, it's not a good time. Well, and I've seen some people concerned, you know, that uh, well, I have to learn a new rule set on each page. But I mean, as you watch the the, it's both a, it, it comes off as a bit of a concern, but it's a strength because that means the rule book itself to actually learn the game. The right. actual rules from the Five game. Five to ten are, minutes. The actual rules, rules are two pages. Right. And so, you know, of course there's the setup instructions and diagrams and all that, but really, yeah, as he said, there's really only two full pages of rules. And then when you encounter a new place of which you will only find six, 
I mean, yeah. you can learn this game so quickly and be up and running. It puts a it puts a relatively straightforward uh, spin on the rule on the otherwise basic rules that right. keep it fresh each time you play it because right. it's, well, you have you have the common actions that are going to be in every place. You're only learning one new mechanic. And they're all easily digestible and they all make thematic sense. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that is Almanac the Dragon Road from Scott Olms. Uh, as I said, launching, launching on Kickstarter Thursday. this Thursday. We're super excited for this one. Uh, we're all big fans of Scott's work and he's been a joy to work with. Incredibly talented designer. And uh, do we have any questions or anything in the comments there? No. We do not. So uh, thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, again, click on the links there to join the contest for an opportunity to win a, a free uh, base pledge with all the stretch goals. And uh, thanks for watching. And we will see you uh, for another live play on next Tuesday and hopefully this Thursday on Kickstarter. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.